So I studied lead code for a whole year, and today I wanted to talk about my whole experience. So it sounds kind of ridiculous when you first hear it, but if you look at a lot of the computer science forums, there's actually a lot of people out there doing this because of the difficulty of software engineering interviews. So today I'm gonna to cover my motivation for doing so, the process I took, and if I recommend this for others. I'm also gonna share my thoughts on what I would do if I were to change it and start all over again. So let's get started. So let's start with my motivation. So I made the decision to start studying in August of 2019 after spending about two years previously in tiny startups, both of which had five or less engineers. My purpose for studying was just pretty much to break into these large tech companies, all of which almost exclusively interview by asking these leak code style interview questions. If you don't know what leak code is, they're pretty much coding puzzles that a lot of these top software companies ask in order to assess engineers during interviews. So overall, I had four reasons for trying to break into big tech. Number one, I wanted to see how software works at big tech companies. Two, I wanted to increase my compensation. Three, I just wanted to meet more people that were kind of like me, software engineers in their 20s to 30s. And lastly, I was kind of just tired of working at startups and all the problems that come with them. Now let's talk about the process I went through. To preface this, I was a terrible computer science student when I was in college. And so my fundamentals were really terrible. So I was basically starting from scratch when I decided to study. So to lay out my process, from August 2019 until October 2019, I used the service called Algo Expert, which was heavily marketed on YouTube at that time. And then from October until December of that year, I used Interview Camp which was basically a paid service that taught you data structures and algorithms through video. And then from December of 2019 until about April of 2020, I switched over to using elements of programming interviews in Python because that book was highly recommended. Pretty much from April of 2020 until August of 2020, which is when I found my job, I used Leak Code pretty much exclusively to study for interviews. And while I was doing all these questions, I recorded every time I did one, which service I did it on, when the last time I did it was, and the time it took me to solve every question. And if you want numbers, I did about 400 in total. So now the question you've been waiting for, was it all worth it? I would say yes, but not for the reason that you think. The main upside of this for me was that it completely transformed my work ethic. Before this point in my life, I was a really bad procrastinator and I kind of did the bare minimum when I was in college. I never in my life spent this much time studying for a single topic for a goal that I set out for myself. So I laid out a plan for how to study. I set aside time every day after work from 5 to 7 p.m. and I dedicated myself towards my goal. And overall, it worked. I kept to my schedule, but my original plan was not to study for this long. The whole thing was kind of extended by the course of the pandemic. Now, would I do all this again? Quick note here, I'm gonna describe how to do the whole process in the most efficient way, but if I were to do it again, I would only study for maybe a month. So I would start by completely eliminating Algo Expert and Interview Camp from my curriculum because even though they were good services, it wasn't really worth the money or the time. Then I would just really start learning the fundamentals. The fundamentals being data structures and algorithms because skipping these will cost you way more time down the line than if you just took the time to learn them all properly from the beginning. So how do you learn the fundamentals? The only book you need is the one I described earlier called Elements of Programming Interviews in Python. It gives you the recommended questions you should do for each chapter based off your timeline. And if you follow the guide, it should take you about a month or two to get all the fundamentals set in stone. This will save you a lot of time in the future as you'll realize that every problem can be solved using some combination of these data structures and algorithms that you learn. So they're kind of like your toolbox for solving these questions. After you've learned the fundamentals, just go to leetcode.com and do as many questions as you can. The most important thing here is to time yourself when you're doing the questions and to make sure you can complete every question in under 25 minutes. If you can't finish it by 25 minutes, just look at the solution and work backwards and then repeat the problem three to five days later. The reason for all this is that when you're studying, you want to as closely simulate the interview environment as possible. So when it's time for the actual interview, 
you would have already simulated the pressure of a real interview and you'll be much more prepared for the stresses that come with it. So now you're probably asking, should I do this myself? First of all, ask yourself how much you like programming and computer science because if your answer is you don't like it that much, then this will definitely burn you out. I almost completely burned myself out during the process and during the interviews that followed and it's a pretty stressful process. Also decide if you even want to shoot for top companies. If your only goal is just to work at any software company and maintain a job, then you probably won't need as deep of an understanding of these interview questions as much. Most of these smaller companies, like the ones I worked in previously, mostly just ask about my experience and maybe in a very easy version of one of these questions. Something to note though, since the pandemic pushed most onsite interviews to be virtual, they've become even harder than they were before. I have two theories for this. The first one is that more people are studying now that they've been quarantined for a year and were at home most of the time. And the second one is that since programming interviews don't need to be done on a whiteboard anymore, you could code much faster on a computer than you could writing it down on a board. So these companies had to make their questions even harder than before to compensate for that. In conclusion, if you're gonna do this, make sure you're doing it efficiently and that you're prepared for the mental challenges that come with studying for so long. And if you're asking, did I achieve my goal? I think I did. I eventually ended up at a large size tech company and that's all I really wanted. Anyways, feel free to drop any questions down in the comment section. I started this channel with the goal of helping aspiring engineers, so I'm happy to answer anything that comes up. But yes, these programming questions suck and I hate them.